This next project has to do with sorting numbers. We're going to move away from the GUI interfaces for a moment and go back to consoles. The reason that we're doing this particular program is that when you need to do an activity such as sorting numbers, it actually matters how you do it. Computers may be fast, but it turns out that they're not so fast that you, you can just ignore how long something takes, and we're going to deal with this. What's going to end up happening is that we're going to have a series of different kinds of files and we're going to try to sort them using different techniques. So one of these is bubble sort. I'll show you that um, in a video. There's selection sort, and then there's something called table sort. So the basic idea is that you're going to read in a series of numbers in from an input file, going to put them into an array, and then sort them using one of these three things. And then we're going to output those into an output file. So to begin with, let's see if we can actually just read in the numbers. So in the readme and on the website are these input files. Um, input 4 is too big to fit on the website, but make sure you can at least deal with the first three. So if we look at this, all this is is a bunch of numbers between, uh, I believe, 0 and 1,000, separated by commas. That's one of the files. Here's another file with slightly more numbers. And then there's this one, which has slightly more numbers yet. So we want to update read in these numbers, sort them in order, and put them into an output file. So let me go ahead and start up a new project. Sort. Create a new class. Sort. Let's grab main. So new sort, public sort. OK, so the first thing that I should do is I should find out which of these files I need to read in. So I'm actually going to be reading in from the console. So I need a scanner. Um, con how about console input, which will take system.in. Go ahead and import that. So I should prompt the user for what I need. Enter a number for the input file. And the different input files are input 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's do this. I'm just going to enter in something that gives them an idea of what they need to put in. So now I need to read something in. Let's go ahead and put in a string. Notice that I didn't actually uh, create a new string here. I've created space for it. If I try and use this string, so if I say char at zero. Um, and I try and run this guy. I'm getting something called a null pointer exception. So I've created this variable input, but I've never put anything into it. If there's any kind of object, which string is, it doesn't default it to, any, to a particular value. It defaults it to null a special keyword null, which means that it's not pointing to anything. There's space and memory for it to put a string there, but there's currently not one there. So I haven't put anything in here. Once I assign it a value, which happens here, so next line, now input has something in it. It's pointing to whatever this next line of input is. So I should probably be careful about this. So if input.length is not equal to 1, then I need to say something like, hey, enter a 1, 2, 3, or 4. Decimate.out.println. So wow, input.length is not that thing do this. And actually, 
I want to check to make sure that it's a1, a2, a3, or a4 as well. So input dot char at zero. is not equal to a one, and input dot char at zero is not equal to a two, the character two, and this stuff again, only three and four. And actually, this is the same check I'm going to use in the while statement. So while that's the case, keep reading in from the console until they finally actually do what they're supposed to do. So let's see here. While that's not those things, read in a line. That'll go off the end here. Once we actually have that input, so once we get out of the if statement and while statement, that better be a 1, 2, 3, or 4. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to read in a particular file. So scanner, let's see, do I need a scanner up above? I might, so let's take care of that. File input. So file input is going to be a new scanner. And instead of reading in from system in, we're going to read from a new file. And the file is going to be input plus whatever they typed in, input.char at zero plus dot txt. So this is the name of the actual file. And it's going to be either input one, input two, input three, so on. We do need to surround this with a try catch just in case something goes horribly wrong. So try to do this thing just in case this file doesn't exist, and that would be a problem. So I'm going to rename it ex for exception, because I like that better than just e, because I feel like that's an event. And next, I need to actually probably exit, because if they don't have the file, that's a problem. All right, so now that we actually have an input file, I need to make sure that I can actually break it up into pieces. So I'm going to create an array of ints, which are my numbers to sort. So let's call this the input array. Now I don't know the size of that. It's going to be depending on whatever the file is that I read in. And that's going to happen down here. Um, I'm going to read in one line from this file input, and that's actually going to be the entire string, all of the um, things that are in that one input file. In string in file is file input dot next line. Once I have this, now I need to actually break it up into pieces. So I actually need to figure out how to take a string and break it on commas. Fortunately, there is an easy way to do that. So if we go look up string in the API, there's string. There is a particular method in string which is called split. So split, what it does is it, you give it something called a regular expression. In our case, it's going to be a comma. And whatever that particular character is, it breaks the string into a series of strings. And it gives you back an array of all those strings, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to actually split our input on a comma and return that. So in file.split, in our case, the only thing we want is a comma. And we're going to take that and put it in a string array. Uh, let's see, 
what did I call my array up here? Input array. Input string array is that. Now I need to actually create, change all of those strings into my ints, and now I have my numbers and I can actually start to process them. So input array is going to now be whatever size this guy is. Input string array dot length. So now I've actually created this array. Well, well, I've not put anything into it, but I've made it the right size. I'm going to walk through everything in the string array and basically do an integer parseint where I actually change a string into an int. So input array i is integer dot parseint input string array i. Once we're all done, we've got everything that's going to be in the input array. And just to double check that, um, I've typed a lot of code without actually testing it. Shame on me. So let's actually print out everything that's in input array. Um, so these files here have to be in the same place as my actual project. So if I go down to sort, so I need to put those files out here. This is the default path for where files start. So it's just outside of the source folder and the binary folder here. So that's where it's going to look for these particular files. So now if I run this, enter a file, how about one? There we go. So it actually read in all those various numbers. Out of curiosity, two. Lots, lots, lots more numbers. Three. It's got so many numbers, it doesn't even show you the top because it ran out of memory and system out to show you everything. I'm not even going to bother with four. There's a lot of numbers in there. <laughs>